One of the things about second place is that no matter how nice the silver is, you may be pained by knowing it's not gold. And so if you get into Jannah and you feel the lowness of your rank, it kind of defeats the purpose. Jannah isn't just Jannah for the physical blessings. It's also Jannah because the hearts and minds are being settled as well. So how merciful is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that when you enter into Jannah and you take your place, you will not feel like you're in a lower place no matter where you are. Now the Prophet ﷺ said, when you ask Allah, ask Him for Al-Firdaus Al-A'la, ask Him for the highest rank. Don't ask Him for anything less and make sure that you work for it. But in Jannah, even the masakin of it, the people of the lowest rank, will think they have it all. The Prophet ﷺ mentioned the last people as a group that come into Jannah and enter into their residences. And the homes of Jannah actually have names on them. So people are waiting for them to come. And this last batch of people enter and the Prophet ﷺ said that Ahlul Jannah, the people that have been there for a long time, they call them Al-Jahannamiyeen, the people of Jahannam. Not in a way that's derogatory, but they, these were the last people to come out of hellfire and enter into Jannah. The Prophet ﷺ said, وَرَأَيْتُ رَجُلًا مِنْ أُمَّتِي إِنْتَهَا إِلَىٰ أَبْوَابِ الْجَنَّةِ فَغُلِّقَتِ الْأَبْوَابُ دُونَهُ فَجَاءَتْهُ شَهَادَةُ أَنْ لَا إِلَهِ إِلَّا اللَّهِ فَأَخَذَتْهُ بِيَدِهِ فَأَدْخَلَتْهُ الْجَنَّةِ He said Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, I saw this man who came to the gates of Jannah and the gates were shut in his face. And then the only thing he had was La ilaha illallah so La ilaha illallah came and it took him by the hand and it entered him into Jannah. Now the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said in another narration, this is a very famous story that comes through several ahadith. He said Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that I have seen the last person, the very last human being that will enter into paradise from hellfire. Now I want you to think about how bad this person must be, right? What major sins did this person commit? How little faith was left in their hearts that they were the last person that will leave Jahannam and enter into Jannah, right? And look at the mercy that Allah is going to show this person that has committed probably all sorts of crimes, all sorts of evil, and just had a trace of Iman left in his heart. The Prophet ﷺ said that this man comes out of the fire and he's walking and stumbling and crawling and he's scorched. And as he looks back at hellfire, he says, Tabaraka ladi najani mink. You know, all praises and glory be to the one who saved me from you. I am the most blessed person today. I mean, there is nothing that could be better than my situation to just escape from the torment that I have been in for as long as I have been in it. And so as he is there, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala causes this tree to sprout. And he looks at that tree and he says, Ey Rabbi, O oh my Lord, Adnini min hadihi shajara. Let me come close to that tree. Give me that tree so that I can benefit from its shade. And I can drink from the water under it. Ya Allah, let me have that tree. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to him, How do I know, O my servant, that if I give you that tree, you're not going to ask me for more? He said, No, no, no. That's it, Ya Allah. O my Lord, that's all I'm going to ask you for. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives him the tree. And then Allah causes another tree to sprout. And this tree is bigger and more beautiful. And the shade of it is greater. And the water underneath is greater. And he says, Ey Rabbi, oh my Lord, let me have that one. I'm not going to ask you for any other tree, but let me have that tree so I can benefit from its shade and I can drink from its water. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya Abdi, oh my servant, didn't you say last time that you weren't going to ask for anything else? He says, Ya Allah, that's it. And then there's a third tree. And this tree sprouts right next to the gates of Jannah. And it's bigger and more beautiful. And the water is sweeter. And this person says, Ya Allah, let me have that tree. And I promise I'm not going to ask you for anything else. And Allah says, but you asked twice already. 
you know, how do I know you're not going to ask for more? Yeah, Allah, that's it. And the Prophet says something very beautiful here. He says when he's that close to Jannah, يَسْمَعُ أَصْوَاتَ أَهْلِ الْجَنَّةِ He's hearing the voices of the people of paradise, their joy and their happiness, and he can see through the gates. And so he calls out to Allah and he starts to cry. Ya Rab, adkhil niha. Ya Rab, adkhil niha. Ya Rab, adkhil niha. Oh my Lord, enter me into it. Oh my Lord, enter me into it. Oh Allah, enter me into it. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Oh my slave, what is going to stop me from your asking? How would you like that I give you the entire world and what is like it with it and what is like it with it? Up to 10 times in blessing of the entire world. Would that stop you from asking, oh my slave? And he says, Oh my Lord, are you making fun of me? <laughs> are you mocking me? And you are the Lord of the worlds? And Ibn Mas'ud who started to laugh. And they asked him why he was laughing. He said, because when the Prophet وسلم, was telling us this story, when he was narrating us this incident, the Prophet وسلم, laughed and he said, your Lord laughed and your Lord says, I'm not making fun of you, but I am the Lord of the worlds. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala takes this man and he enters him into Jannah and he gives him in the lowest rank of Jannah, 10 times this entire world and that person would think that he is the luckiest person in the world. So you enter into Jannah. And the Prophet wasallam said that when you enter into Jannah, you know your way to your home in Jannah even better than the way that you knew your home in this world. You don't need a guide. You don't need a GPS. You go straight to your palace in Jannah. You go straight to your residence. And as you enter into your palace and you marvel at your new residence, may Allah make us amongst them. You're not just saying Alhamdulillah for Jannah, but you're also saying Alhamdulillah for Allah giving you the means to enter Jannah. Alhamdulillah ladhi sadaqana wa'da. All praises be to the one who fulfilled his promise to us. And you're talking about the things that are around you and you're praising what Allah has given you and praising Allah for what he has given you. And what a blessing for those who worked for this day. Alhamdulillah ladhi hadana li hadha wa ma kunna li nahtadiya lawla an hadana Allah. All praises be to the one who guided us to this. And we would not have been able to be guided if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not guide us. So you're thanking Allah for the moment, you're thanking Allah for the blessings of Jannah, and you're thanking Allah for having enabled you to do the deeds that qualified you for this moment, qualified you for His mercy that entered you into Jannah. But does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make you feel bad? Does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make you feel like you did not do anything to deserve this moment? No. In fact, again, Allah Azza wa Jal puts you at ease. Enjoy what you have. Jaza'an bima kuntum ta'malun. This is a reward for what you used to do. Salamun alaykum bima sabartum. The angels are entering upon you from every single gate of your palace, all around you, the angels are celebrating with you and they're saying, peace be on to you for the patience that you showed. You did this, you earned this. And that's part of settling the person and allowing them to truly feel Jannah as Jannah. And so there you are. And as you're hugging and embracing your family, your loved ones, you are embracing the prophets and the pious people that you always wanted to live around. And you're just in complete joy with everything that's around you, things that you'd heard about, but you could have never imagined this. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes an announcement. Remember the opening announcement on the day of judgment? This time Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala calls the people of paradise forward. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shows you that your places in hellfire are destroyed, that death is destroyed. This is eternal. You are never going to leave this place. You can't mess up and get kicked out of Jannah. You're there. That's it. And so as you are seeing that this is it, I've succeeded. There is no station after this one of trial. The day of judgment is over. The trials of the day of judgment are over. And as you enter into Jannah, the Prophet ﷺ said that the entire day of judgment for the believer was like the time between Dhuhr and Asr. 
You know, <laughs> all of that we just spoke about for Ahlul Jannah, for the people of Jannah, it would have felt like it was just the time between Dhuhr and Asr. And Allah calls out and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya Ahlul Jannah, Ya Ahlul Jannah, O people of paradise. This is the first time you're being called as people of paradise. And you say, Labbayka ya Rabb wa Sa'adayk. Here we come, O oh Allah, we're ready to do what you what you're going to ask of us, whatever it is, oh Allah, this is amazing. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Are you pleased? Allah is asking you, are you pleased? Are you happy? Are, is this what you expected? Is this what you wanted? And Ahl al-Jannah respond and they say, Why should we not be pleased? You gave us what you have not given to anyone of your creation before. This is incredible. Alam wujuhana? Didn't you give us light in our faces? Didn't you make our scales heavy? Didn't you enter us into Jannah? Didn't you protect us from the fire? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, I'm going to give you something better than all of that. And they would say, Ya Rabb, wa ayyu shay'in afdalu min dalik. O our Lord, what could possibly be better than that? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Uhillu alaykum ridwani, fala asqatu alaykum ba'dahu abada. I want you to know that I'm pleased with you. I'm pleased with you. You're pleased with Jannah, radiallahu anhum wa I want you to know that I'm pleased with you. And I'm never going to be angry with you again. SubhanAllah. You know, if you think about someone that you love, uh, and they tell you that, like, you know, I, 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 I'm pleased with you and there's nothing that you could possibly do that would disqualify you from my love at this point. For the believer to hear that from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala directly in paradise is greater than anything in paradise. And this is forever. You never have to worry again. The short life that you worked with, and this is your reward. And Allah being pleased with you is more beloved than paradise and anything in it, which is why there is one more thing. Allah says, لِلَّذِينَ أَحْسَنُ الْحُسْنَ وَزِيَادَةً For those who excelled, for those who worked deeds of excellence, is excellence in return and more. And the Sahaba said, Ya Rasulullah, what is more? The Prophet said, at that point, يَكْشِفُ hijab. Allah removes his veil and you can see him. And seeing him in paradise is not like seeing him on the day of judgment. And the only thing that could top entering paradise and knowing that Allah is pleased with you is when you're staring at him in paradise and seeing him smiling back at you and pleased with you. And the Prophet said, they are not given anything more beloved to them in paradise than that gift. And just like all of the bounties in paradise, its rivers and palaces, its musk and its gardens are not equal to the beauty of seeing him while he's pleased with you. The bounties of this world and everything that it has to offer don't come anywhere close to the beauty of doing deeds that you know are pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, even if you can't see him yet. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us that pleasure of paradise and may Allah allow us to love the deeds that get us into paradise. Oh Allah, we believe in you. We believe in your prophet. We believe in your religion. Oh Allah, we are pleased with you as our Lord. We are pleased with Islam as our religion. And we are pleased with Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam as our prophet. So oh Allah, be pleased with our deeds. Be pleased with us. Keep us sincere. Keep us guided to what is beloved to you. Enable us to do good and to abstain from evil. Grant us safety on the day of judgment and enter us into paradise in the eternal companionship of your Prophet ﷺ. And with the blessing of being able to see you day and night for the rest of our existence. Allahumma ameen. فَهُوَ فِي عِيشَةٍ رَاضِيَةٍ